CNN's Brian Stelter has questioned whether President Joe Biden might be forced to forgo re-election in 2024 because of the legal battles surrounding his son, Hunter Biden. This was in an interview with Michael LaRosa that took place about two weeks after LaRosa left his job as press secretary to First Lady Jill Biden, according to Mediate. Let's take a listen. What about Hunter? Hunter under federal investigation. Charges could be coming at any time. This is not just a right wing media story. This is a real problem mm -hmm. for the Bidens. Mm -hmm. Could he decide not to run for re-election, given his son? Look, they make they make decisions as a family and um, they will make that decision uh, when it's time. But do you, think, he they've talked, he to, do you think they've talked about it yet? No. Yeah, so it's very interesting that he acknowledges there, Brian Stelter does, that this is not just a right-wing media story. This is a le legitimate news story, and it's not legitimate if it's just a right-wing story, I guess. Uh, now, of course, Brian Stelter previously said, um, so, so I'm, this is quoting from a Fox News article about this story about Stelter's previous views on it. He said, for all we know, these emails were made up, or maybe some are real and some are fake. We don't know. We do know this is a classic example of the right-wing media machine. Um, so that's kind of how he portrayed it at one point, although you know, I give him credit for acknowledging it uh, now. Maybe that's small credit. Uh, but uh, I, uh, you know, Brian Stelter is often, uh, I think, the focal point of a lot of criticism of mainstream media. For my mind, he's, he's not ac actually uh, the, the most, by any stretch of the imagination, most dishonest or something in mainstream media. I think, uh, I think he, I've criticized when he gets things wrong. We've criticized him on the show a lot. But I, I think he actually even does a better job of acknowledging um, uh, stories that are legitimate, probably more so than a lot of other mainstream people. But he's, he's the focal point, um, obviously. And I've been on a show. You've been on a show as, as well. So he does give voice to criticisms of CNN and of the mainstream media, which is something almost no one else on that side does. So I, you know, I do always want to acknowledge that, uh, give credit where credit's due on that front. But, uh, but it, interesting to see him now really acknowledging that the Hunter Biden story, it's a real story and it is a problem for the Biden administration. Right. I mean, that's one thing you can say about Brian Stelter is like once it's on his show, that means it's in the mainstream of Democratic speak, right? Like that's what they're talking about. That's what they're debating. You know, to me, I would say I agree with everything you said, but um, I have a problem with when they won't admit that they were wrong about mm -hmm. something. You know, there's there's a lot of that going on in the liberal media to where they will simply shift to where the right was at, um, you know, all along without ever saying, here's why we got this wrong and here ha here's how we're going to make sure we don't do that again. So this is just another one of those cases, a lot like what happens with a lot of the COVID narrative to where, you know, liberals found their way to where mm -hmm. Republicans had been at all along without ever saying we were wrong and you were right. And after here's going, why we made After that going mistake. through the infamous um, Republicans pounce phase, right? First, first, right. The, first there's the <laughs> denial of the story. Then there's, well, it's a story, but it's only a story because Republicans are, you know, maliciously trying to inform you about it. So then we have a Republicans pounce uh, cycle. And then sometimes, as in this case, now there's actual acknowledgement that it is a story apart from the fact just that Republicans are trying to make it a story. And he got a very kind of characteristic non-answer from, uh, from uh, La Rosa there that they haven't decided or you know anything like that. I don't, uh, well, I'm curious what your take is. I guess I probably don't think that the Hunter Biden situation is going to be a significant deciding factor in where whether Biden runs for re-election. I, I guess I could be wrong about that, or maybe maybe if he's on the fence, it tips you it tips you toward not running for re-election. I, I I know I know Joe Biden really loves his son and is a family guy, and you know that's probably one of the more that's probably the, in, in fact the most endearing thing about Biden at this point. I don't really care for his policies, but you know I'm I'm glad he's he's tried to take care of his uh, his son who's had some real struggles. So maybe he, before the sake of family, would not run for re-election. But it is extraordinarily un hard for me to imagine. A, he's, still, he's still a political actor, a political figure, Joe Biden. And to, to forego political power for a family re is like increasingly rare. Uh, it's just, it it's, seems not super likely to me, but I, he might have to, he might decide anyway not to seek re-election for health reasons because of his age, because that's what he's being told to do by others in the party. And then I, you know, the fact that that helps him, 
I, I guess, with their, might help Hunter Biden or might redirect the focus. Although, r really, if Hunter Biden committed some crime, you wouldn't, th then that ends up being kind of a nefarious reason. I'm not running, I'm not running for re-election because that might help my son get away with, you know, whatever the underlying alleged criminal behavior is. As long as if it's influence peddling, if it's just, you know, the drug addiction or whatever, I don't think that should be criminal for anyone, not even, not Hunter Biden or anyone else. But if it's, it's the, it's the, the money and the influence peddling that I, from, from my standpoint is the kind of legitimate uh, point of contention or probing, not, you know, what people who's buying drugs or using drugs. I don't care about that. So my understanding was not that it would be as a sort of gift to take, you know, to Hunter to take care of him, but rather that it would just prove to be too much of a liability for Biden mm. to run again mm -hmm. with that hanging around his neck, which is a lot less generous reading than yours. Um, I will say the thing that I found most interesting about that um, interview was, um, you know, the, the statement that they do make decisions as a family, right? Because of course, President Biden's whole defense against um, all of Hunter Biden's, you know, you know, nefarious various business dealings has been, well, I have not been involved in that. And of course, slowly but surely stuff has leaked out from the laptop, et cetera, of, you know, how much, in, you know, how involved he actually guy. was. The big guy, exactly. And so to hear somebody defend the family by saying they make decisions as a family, uh, that was sort of, you know, kind of corroborating what a lot of us have been suspecting. Mm. Do, you, do you think Biden will on, is honestly thinking about not running uh, for re-election again. I because we're debating this a lot on the show. I'm kind of changing my mind a little bit. I really thought like there's no way he's not going to run because it would be so historically unpre no one willingly gives up power. No one doesn't take a chance to be president if there's a good chance. You know, even if it's only a 40 percent chance or something, he's still got a 40 percent chance of being president again. That's four, you know, four flips of the coin out of ten. <laughs> you're reelected. Of course you go for that. Of course you go for that. But I don't know. More and more people who are who are not just you know playing the pundit game of saying crazy things and hoping they're right and then they'll sound smart and just pretending they didn't say it when they turn out to be wrong. More and more people who I, I, I feel are at least somewhat credible are raising the prospect that he really might not run for re-election. Uh, so uh, what do you think? Um, I think it's very important to keep in mind that uh, Joe Biden is the man who did not run against Hillary Clinton um, mm. in 2016 because he had just suffered this big loss. Um, this, 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 and I think also what he said was, you know, he had suffered this big loss. He, he was not in the mindset to do it, um, and he wanted the first woman president to be elected. So I, I think he is a man who does have a history of stepping aside. I, I totally agree with you. Most people don't give up power willingly, but he he does have that history of having done that. Um, you know, in terms of whether he's going to run again, he's having a really good few months right now. You know, he's he's getting he just got a version of Build Back Better pass, you know, the Chick, Chips Act, you know, where he's he's sort of got a, a bit of momentum now. I'm sure that's going to influence his decision. Um, I, I, I could imagine him not running. Um, I think especially if they if they can find a replacement for him, somebody that they think will be, you know, um, someone who they think will be more popular. Popular. You know, mm. Sherrod Brown didn't run in 2020 because um, the, 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 you know, the field was was uh, very uh, full. And also he's, you know, one of these people who just doesn't want to be president, you know, but I think he, he's a person who could definitely be corralled. And he's sort of one of those moderate uh, Democrats that still has some working class support. So, I mean, there's people that they're not speaking about yet that I think if they expressed interest um, might be, you know, compelling reasons for the president to not run again. I, I, I don't want to prognosticate because it's a fool's, uh, it's a fool's endeavor. But I could see both sides, like you. Mm. Well, the war between Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg <laughs> is just going to be scorched earth uh, if that happens. But uh, we shall see. More rising right after this.